Let's see what happens. Oh, nice. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check this out. It's the Deep Trekker DT2 Worker. This is an underwater industrial submarine. If you've seen some of my other reviews on other submarines, they've always had a little bit to be desired where the camera pitch and stuff wasn't quite where we wanted it to be and the stability, but I've got high hopes for this one. It's called the Deep Trekker, and we're gonna do a deep dive into this one. We're gonna do several, several reviews of it. Uh, today's just gonna be an unboxing, inspection, and setup and see how it looks with the FPV and just what all the functions do. And then in the next few videos, we're gonna do a underwater freshwater test and also an ocean test. I'm gonna try to get out in some deep water. This one can go pretty deep and we're gonna see how it all works. So anyway, let's get started with the Deep Trekker and see what it's all about. Okay, so I've already taken it out of the box. As you can see, it's a big boy here. Um, it's not very light. The Deep Trekker itself probably weighs about, I wanna say 15 pounds with just this guy here. We have the controller here. It's a built-in, all-in-one. Almost looks like it's fully waterproof. This has a three 328 foot cable or 100 meter cable on a reel back there. We'll get to that in just a second. It did come in this big industrial plastic box here. So you can see over there on the side, I'm not gonna really go into that, but it's all mounted up and locked down in there. So you're not gonna get any issues with shipping and stuff like clanking around in there and damaging. It was really secure in the box. Have no doubt this is gonna be a super industrial one. But anyway, let's get into it. So as we can see, first up is the Trekker itself, the Deep Trekker. They have multiple versions of this. They've got versions um, with different size tethers here. This is, the, like I said, 100 meter here. And this one has, check it out, this one has a grabber arm on it that you can control remotely from the controller. So we're gonna be able to open that thing up, close it, and also spin it like this. And it has this camera inside of it. This is like a plexiglass uh, ring all the way around. It's not actually glass, it's a plexiglass acrylic type of material so that it will not be able to crack or break if you hit stuff. It says you can actually polish scratches out of this as well. It's got a camera here, which we're gonna boot up in a second, check it out, that actually rotates all the way up to vertical and it can go all the way down. Of course, we have the grabber arm on right now, so we're not gonna be able to see down to the very bottom, but if you take this thing off, which actually just comes off with these little, almost looks like giant body clips, you can pull these out, you can take this arm off, and uh, you can put other peripherals, or you can just have this thing completely off, and you can actually see out the glass on the very bottom if you wanted to, so pretty cool. We've got high intensity LED lights in the front. We've also got a high intensity LED light on the camera itself. We can turn off and on with all these controls, which we're gonna go over in just a sec. Pulling this thing a little bit closer, it's got these industrial handles on top. These are ballast weights, so you can put ballast weights on the top and the bottom to adjust for fresh water or salt water. This is a dive plane, so as far as, <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but this also has the ability to mount um, extra cameras or extra lights on top if you really wanted to. There's some, you can see there's some holes in the top plate, four holes, so you could do some mounting there if you wanted to. And basically the design is just sandwiched all together. So as you can see, it's got two sides and it's sandwiched into this ring in between. Uh, these are rubber bumpers, so really soft rubber for bumping things underwater. It's also got rubber bumpers around the edges here. And then there's just these bolts basically holding it in, two on the top, two on the bottom, four bolts just sandwiching everything together. Really big motors, look at these things. So these motors are gonna be really powerful. You can see how thick and bulky these are. Very, very industrial. And then in the back, we've got the propellers here, possibly a composite carbon fiber and plastic together. They do feel like they're gonna be very durable and um, easily replaceable. You can just see there's a nut on the back. We can just pop those off and put them back on if we break a blade or something. Here we've got the rear end of it, and you can see how that glass just comes all the way around, and then we've got our ports in the back. So this is a sensor port. There's a sensor here, like a dive sensor, probably for depth and stuff. 
We've got a USB port here, and these are all locked down by these plugs. And this USB port is where we're gonna offload the onboard video. This thing actually shoots in 4K video if we wanted to, all the way down to 480. So we have a broad range of video resolutions. Over here is the port for the extra grabber here. Here's where the tether's attaching, straight to the back. So super industrial uh, tether here, very thick tether also. The grabber itself is actually supposed to be able to hold 50 pounds. Of course, the sub can't pull in the water 50 pounds, but you, what they say is you can just grab the tether and pull whatever you grab with the grabber and pull it up to the surface. So they're making this really strong for that purpose. One of the things I've already done is there is a little hole in there. You can see that hole where my finger is, and that's for a shipping lock. It locks the camera in position inside so that shipping doesn't damage the camera from banging up and down since it is kind of on a swivel motor. So let's move to the bottom real quick before we check out the controller and the other stuff. And look at this grabber. Like I said, it's just basically there's these pins. They look like giant body clips that we just pull out. Looks like you might need like a, a pliers or something to pull those out, but you one, two, three, four, and the entire grabber arm just drops off. And look how industrial and bulky this grabber arm is. High quality and durable stuff. We're gonna turn this on and see how this grabber arm works in just a second. Before we do that, we just wanna take a look at the controller before we turn it on. And very industrial looking, and like I said, it's gotta be close to waterproof, if not waterproof, because everything is sealed up. So the left stick just goes up and down, left and right and actually does a full circular articulate motion here. The right stick is only going up and down. There's no left and right, just up and down for that. We have this entire readout here. There's all these lights and there's a bunch of buttons on the front. And there's also kind of like trigger buttons on the back. So we have four here. That's gonna be for, I believe that's the rates and also moving the camera up and down. And then on the right side here, this is gonna be our grabber arm clamping and rotation here. So it's just kind of like a cross button there. A uh, couple of plugs in the top. And the cool thing about this one, it doesn't use any type of wireless or software to be integrated with a phone or a tablet. It's using its whole integrated, kind of like CCTV controller here where it does have an output. This is an RCA video output you can plug in and you can actually plug your FPV goggles into it. This is a pair of SkyZone FPV goggles I've, I really love and I've been using for a long time. And these goggles have actually an AV in port right here. You can see that on the bottom. So we could plug this controller into there and the, the goggles actually come with their own cable. Anyway, we're gonna turn this on in just a sec. I just wanna get to the uh, reel and tether real quick and here it is. They've really done a good job on this. If, as you can see, it's a very elongated one and it's rather thin. The cool thing about this too is it's got this protective sheath on about 10, 10 feet of the material. Let me just wind some out here and you can see how they've kind of stopped it here. They did some like heat shrink tubing with glue inside so you've got mesh to protect it when it's close to the sub and in the rocks. Look how big and thick this tether is. It's a different kind of material than what we've seen with some of the other subs. This is very thick and it's also just a shiny, really durable and non-porous type of tether. So I think this is going to be have a lot more breaking strength than some of the other tethers uh, we've seen and it's going to be very industrial. There is a little knob to hold to reel it up. There's a rubber plug here. We flip it over to the other side and this is what's so cool about this reel. Right inside of this little component, that's gotta be some kind of waterproof uh, contact surface between tether inside the reel and the tether outside of the reel that goes to the controller because it's freewheeling and nothing's getting tangled. So there is some type of very awesome mechanism here. Since the wireless thing we've seen and it's not been very good with a lot of the other subs, there's always been some lag and connection issues. In other subs, they put the wireless module on the spinning reel, so it's spinning around with the reel, and then it's wireless to your controller that's also wireless to your phone or tablet. And just from my experiences, there's always been quite a bit of lag and quite a bit of dropouts with the wireless stuff. So I think this is the way to go to have that solid connection with no breaks, it is a solid cable connection to your controller with this freewheeling connection here that they've done very well. So really impressed with that. And the last thing I wanted to show you on this reel before we start this thing up, sorry it's been taking so long for me to get to it. These are stainless steel uh, bolted in feet 
that just easily push out. They've got a little bit of resistance, which is just perfect because they won't fall back in. So one, two, three, four, and you can put these in any direction you want. And of course, the farther you have them out, the more stability you're gonna have when you stand this thing up. As you can see, that thing's not going anywhere. It's got a wide platform, the feet go out very wide, and so that thing's not gonna be tipping over. You could also strap it down, put some weight on it, if you're on a boat or on the shore, wherever you are, kayak, uh, so that this reel will stay up. Great idea. Okay guys, so almost there with starting up and checking out the Deep Trekker. But before we do that, I just wanna go through these three bags that come in the box. So we get three of these nicely done bags here. Uh, the first little bag, very light, there is a 4K camera manual. Now that's the camera that's inside the actual sub. It shows you how to use it, shows you all of the uh, resolutions you can do from 480 all the way up to 4K resolution there, so. Pretty cool. And this other thing in the bag, this is quite interesting. It looks like this is like a little uh, DVR that you can attach to your computer. I'm really not gonna be using this. They give this as an option because I'm gonna be using those SkyZone goggles, remember? I'm gonna be plugging directly into the SkyZones through that RCA output on the controller. And this has a DVR inside of it that will record that. So I can have these on my face looking at the FPV while recording the video. And also it records, don't forget, on board on the Trekker there that we can offload by plugging in. Okay, second bag, and this feels kind of bulky. This has got to be all of the charging material. Yep, this one looks like it's gonna charge the controller here. And we have a wall adapter with that figure eight plug on top that's gonna stick in there. And we also have the sub charger itself. And it does look like, depending on what country you live in, I'm in the US, so I have that type of double prong connector. This is like a um, UK, Asia, I believe Australia may also use this one. And the last bag, and this one, it sounds kind of noisy, and that's probably because this is gonna have all the tools you need to get this thing locked and unlocked and all up and running, and all of the ballast modules. We've got two screwdrivers, one flathead, and this is the one, remember, I was talking about you're gonna use for unlocking that camera, putting it in that back port and backing it out till it stops, and then putting it back in while the sub is upside down and uh, locking that down before you ship. And then we just have a cross type of screwdriver, plugs for plugging some of the ports that we're not using. And look at all these things. So these are all ballast modules. Wow, a whole bunch of them. And all these are stainless steel plates. So we have some very thin and some very thick. And so we're gonna be alternating and putting these on if we're using fresh water, salt water. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what, what this grabber arm does because this thing already has a bunch of weight aside from how it comes from the factory stock with no peripheral on board. We've also got a bunch of these uh, clips as well. It looks like around eight of these clips to uh, if you lose them or you bend them, uh, these hold on that grabber arm on the bottom. So to power this guy on, all we're doing since we're all plugged in is pressing power here. I just hit it once. We got our screen coming on. It says AV1, Deep Trekker. And let's see if we can get any video. There we go. Hey, how's it going, guys? <laughs> so there we go. There's our video. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna turn this this way. Great color, great resolution. It actually looks much better than something you'd see in FPV goggles. Um, it does look like it's at least 480p resolution in there. You can see it as an LCD screen, so the more we turn it, um, the different kind of glare and shades we're gonna see. But it's actually a very good anti-glare screen. I have a huge amount of glare behind me because the windows are open there, you can see the sky. And it does a pretty good job at not giving us too much glare. The only thing I can see if you are out in the sun, maybe fashion some sort of sunshade, or since we're gonna be using the FPV goggles here, that will actually mitigate the sun issue. What I did notice is when I turned it on, see the camera here? The camera just went straight forward. So that's pretty cool. So the camera levels itself and there's actually two LED lights on the top and let's see what these do. So I'm gonna press the first LED button here. Nice, so that's for the two lights that are surrounding the camera. And we can see the image from the inside. I'm seeing a little bit of possibly reflection from the camera inside. So if I turn that off, these two here are the outside LEDs. So that will totally mitigate that internal reflection of the light. So if we press that on, 
wow, those things are super bright. And I'm not seeing any, if you look at the video, I'm not seeing any kind of internal glare. Once we turn on, let's also turn on the inside uh, light. There we go. Not bad, actually. Let's try to move this camera up and down. There we go. So I'm pressing these, uh, this outside kind of trigger button up and down here. And look at that camera just go up and down. That's awesome. Really liking that. And if you hold it, it seems to go faster and almost to the bottom. And there we go. Look at that. When we're working, we can see our worker arm. I'm turning off the outside lights. That's the internal light there. And we can move the camera around however we want to see our grabber arm. And we have all these functions here. We can lock the camera into the horizon or we can lock the camera into what the front of the sub is doing. So we have those options there as well. If you look over to the left motor, you can see that as I push forward, that left motor is going for it. And if I push left or right, that's turning the sub left or right. And then pulling back would be reverse. So we know we can go forward, back, uh, left and right. But then you think of, well, how the heck is it going to pitch forward and back if there's no motors on the top or bottom? There's only two motors on this one, keep in mind. So you think maybe it's gonna be a little bit unstable, but let's check that out. So as we push up, you see that in there? There's an actual counterweight inside. So what it's doing is it's using the whole camera uh, accessory there inside with these counterweights. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna try to move the weight and so the whole sub will turn. So I could see if you're really jerking it hard like this, it's gonna be rocking all over the place, which we'll be checking out in our ocean test and our um, water test when we do it. Very slow movements, it looks like, to be able to have that counterweight really smooth and so the sub will just follow suit. We've got just these little LEDs here. It's telling us that the lights are on or off. If I turn it off, there goes, the lights go off. And so I like how we can use either the outside lights or the inside light on the camera. That's really great. Of course, we're not gonna be able to see the grabber arm quite as well, probably underwater, if we're using the outside light. So if you really need all that light, turn them all on. Now this is with all of them on. You see how bright that gets. There's a couple of more buttons here on the right-hand trigger. Let's see what these ones do, actually. I think those ones are for the gain. Yeah, so I'm hitting that up is 10, and I can go all the way down to four. And I think that's gain for the speed. So if I go down to four and I hit forward, very slow, you hear that? It's very slow. I'm gonna keep forward being pressed and I'm gonna push up on the gain. All the way to 10. So that's the fastest speed when you're in the water. And that's adjusting turning and forward and back. Awesome. So it looks like we can go super slow and maneuverable in very calm waters, or we can punch it all the way up to 10 if we really wanna go fast. Okay, now this is gonna be the fun part. This is getting over to this left trigger, and this is gonna be our grabber rotation and grabbing. So if I push down on this cross button, that's closing it. You can hear that uh, motor working now. I'm gonna push up on the cross. Nice, look at that grabber arm. So that just completely opened it up. I don't think we want to turn it on the table while it's open. It looked like it'll hit the table. So I'm gonna close it almost all the way. I believe the instruction said, don't close it all the way and try to turn it either. So I'm gonna close it almost to its maximum and then I'm gonna try to turn it. So I'm pressing the left on this cross button. And look at that. <laughs> pressing the right. So we can turn it both ways and we can open it and close it. Pretty darn cool. So I wanted to try something here guys with this water bottle real quick. Let me go ahead and turn on the lights again so we can see that a little bit better. There we go, so we can see it on the FPV screen and also just on the camera. I'm gonna open up this thing so we can grab this water bottle and just try to smash it. There we go, so I'm just gonna push it inside just like that. And let's see if we can actually crush this water bottle and how much strength we have to do this. So I'm gonna press down on the button now, the cross. Let's see what happens. Oh, nice. Let me see if I can possibly rotate this and show you guys what's going on. And look at this, we can just keep rotating. So you see how it's not hitting an endpoint? 
So that's pretty a pretty uh, good feature there. So it's it's pretty smashed in there. Um, it looks like I can pull it out with some force, but again, this is a slippery water bottle. Uh, but this thing, it says it's supposed to be able to clamp on and hold about 50 pounds of weight, just so you can get stuff out. And it does have these notches here, so if you're trying to grab, say, cables and doing some underwater work, you see how it's kind of like a worm drive coming out there? There's the little screw. Of course, you don't wanna put your fingers in there because this thing can crush to about 50 pounds, I believe. But these are aluminum arms. You can actually see that there is like a little gear mesh here. So as this worm drive screw turns, the ed inside edges of the arms have these little teeth that are gonna grab into the screw drive and they're gonna go ahead and close it, just like this. And there we go. Okay guys, so before we wrap this up, I just wanted to show you how it looks like in the FPV goggles and how to connect these. So we take our RCA adapter cable that should come with your goggles. One of the, maybe the little bit of cons on this controller th here is that it's really hard. Whoop, that thing just flew. But it's really hard to take these plugs out. So maybe if they had some kind of twist lock plug on the controller to seal these up. But as you can see, we have a port here and that's an, a yellow RCA down in the bottom there, the female. And so all we're doing is we're taking our yellow from our cable and we're plugging it in there. And then we take the other side and we plug in our goggles right to the bottom AV in right here. Now, of course, these goggles are just like an FPV uh, race drone type of goggles. Of course, you could use any type of um, screen or input you wanted to, as long as it has an AV input. And let's see if we can see the actual image within the goggles. And it's probably gonna be really hard for you to see, but there it is. There's the screen, just like a regular set of FPV goggles. We're seeing uh, the same exact screen we're seeing on the controller itself. So real cool function there to have an output for a second screen. And if you have a set of goggles like this, or any type of cheap, cheap goggles too, I'll have some goggles and also the Deep Trekker uh, linked in in the description down below for you to check it out and record exactly what you're seeing on the screen. Anyways, pretty darn awesome. So I'm probably gonna, if it's a sunny day and we test it out there, I'm probably gonna be slapping these on while I talk to you guys in the dive test. So stay tuned for multiple series on this Deep Trekker. I'm really, really excited to get this thing in the water. I wanna take it up to that waterfall pond where I lost my first Mavic Pro. You remember that? If you may have seen it, I've been looking for it with a few different subs, but this one's got this grabber arm on it. since. This one has a pitching camera. You can go really slow. It's got hours of battery life. It's got great lighting. We can pitch the camera. We can see what we're working on. We can see what we're doing. We can just cruise around, pick up things, move things, investigate and grab. So really anxious to try this in that pond as well as in the ocean and see how it does. If you guys have any ideas um, for when I do put this thing in the water, go ahead and leave a comment down in the description down below. I'll try to do some things. You know, there's some very creative ideas and there's not many subs, I don't know of any except this one, that really has an uh, arm like this, especially from what I've tested. So if you have any ideas of what you'd like to see me do, give me some ideas and I'll try to include them in those videos just so you guys can kind of participate a little bit. So stay tuned guys and don't forget to look in the description down below this video, under the video, I'll have all the components here as well as some goggles you could use and the Deep Trekker itself will take you to their website and you can see all the different models this one has, all the different tiers and models it has. Now this is not a cheap submarine. Um, this isn't competing with the $1,000, $2,000 ones, especially this one with the grabber arm. This is called the worker version. I hope you guys really enjoyed that first really in-depth inspection and just seeing how everything works. Really anxious to get this thing in the water. So stay tuned for the series on this and I'll see you in the water test. Thanks for watching.